The Celts were a diverse group of people who inhabited much of Europe from around the 8th century BC to the 1st century AD. They were known for their distinctive culture, which included intricate metalwork, beautiful art, and a unique language. One theory is that the Celts originated in what is now modern-day Austria and Switzerland. This theory is based on the fact that the Hallstatt culture, which flourished in this region around the 8th century BC, shares many similarities with later Celtic cultures. For example, both cultures produced intricate metalwork and pottery, and both buried their dead in elaborate tombs. Some historians believe that the Hallstatt culture was a precursor to the Celts, and that the Celts emerged from this region and gradually spread throughout Europe. Another theory is that the Celts originated in what is now modern-day France. This theory is based on the fact that the Latin culture, which flourished in this region around the 5th century BC, is considered to be a classic example of Celtic culture. The Latin culture was known for its distinctive art style, which featured swirling patterns and intricate knotwork. Some historians believe that the Latin culture was the true birthplace of the Celts, and that the Hallstatt culture was simply a regional offshoot. Finally, there is a theory that the Celts originated in multiple regions throughout Europe, and that they gradually coalesced into a cohesive culture over time. This theory is based on the fact that there were many different Celtic tribes throughout Europe, each with their own unique customs and traditions. Some historians believe that these tribes were originally separate and distinct, but gradually began to interact with each other and share ideas, leading to the emergence of a larger Celtic culture. Celtic society was a highly stratified structure, with different classes of individuals occupying different roles and positions. At the top were the nobles or aristocrats, who were typically wealthy landowners and wielded significant political power. Below them were the free citizens or freemen, who were often skilled craftsmen, traders, or small farmers. And at the bottom were the slaves, who were often prisoners of war or individuals who had been sold into servitude. One of the most distinctive features of Celtic society was the system of clientage, which was a type of patron-client relationship that bound people together through mutual obligations and responsibilities. Clients were typically freemen who were dependent on a noble or wealthy landowner, and would provide loyalty and services in exchange for protection and support. In turn, the noble would provide them with land, resources, or other forms of assistance. In terms of governance, the Celts were organized into a system of tribes or clans, each of which had its own leaders and council of elders. The chief of the tribe was usually a noble or aristocrat, and was responsible for making decisions on behalf of the tribe. The council of elders, on the other hand, was comprised of respected members of the community, and was responsible for advising the chief and helping to make decisions. In some cases, tribes would band together to form larger confederations or alliances, which were often led by a high king or queen. These confederations were typically created for defensive purposes and allowed the various tribes to pool their resources and coordinate their efforts in times of war or crisis. When it came to law and justice, the Celts had a system of customary law that was enforced by the tribe or clan. Crimes were typically dealt with through compensation or restitution, rather than punishment, and disputes were often settled through negotiation or mediation. However, more serious crimes could result in exile or other forms of severe punishment. Celtic people practiced polytheism, which is the worship of several deities. There were several gods in the Celtic pantheon, each of whom had distinctive qualities. Some of the most famous Celtic deities include Brigid, the goddess of healing and fertility, and Luf, the god of craftsmanship and war. Celtic mythology is full of tales of heroes, monsters, and magical creatures. One of the most famous stories is the tale of Cúchulín, a warrior hero who fought against the forces of Queen Med. Other notable myths include the story of the Morrigan, a goddess of war and fate, and the legend of the Selkies, 
shape-shifting seals who could take on human form. The Celts also believed in the concept of the Otherworld, a mystical realm that existed beyond our own. This realm was said to be populated by supernatural beings and was accessible through places like fairy mounds and sacred trees. Intricate spirals, zoomorphic patterns, and knotwork are hallmarks of Celtic art. One of the most striking features of Celtic art is the knotwork designs. These intricate patterns are made up of interlaced lines that loop and twist around each other. The knots were often used to decorate metalwork, such as swords, shields, and jewelry. Some of the most famous examples of Celtic knotwork can be found in the Book of Kells, an illuminated manuscript that was created in the 9th century. Spirals were another popular motif in Celtic art. These designs often symbolize the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. They were used to decorate everything from stone carvings to pottery. The triple spiral, also known as the triskeel, is a particularly common symbol in Celtic art. Zoomorphic designs, which depict animals and other creatures, were also prevalent in Celtic art. These designs often combined elements of different animals to create fantastical creatures. One of the most famous examples of Celtic zoomorphic art is the Gundestrup cauldron, a silver cauldron that was discovered in Denmark in the 19th century. Celtic art was created by highly skilled craftsmen who worked in a variety of materials, including metal, stone, and wood. The techniques used to create Celtic art were highly advanced for their time, and many of them are still used by craftsmen today. The Celtic culture is known for its rich traditions, and one of the most enduring art forms is music. From haunting ballads to lively dance tunes, Celtic music is a vibrant and diverse genre that continues to inspire and captivate people all over the world. One of the most well-known forms of Celtic dance is Irish step dancing, characterized by fast footwork and an upright posture. The dancers often wear traditional clothing and shoes with hard saws to create a distinctive sound. Another popular form of Celtic dance is Scottish Highland dancing, featuring intricate footwork, leaps, and spins, often performed in traditional Scottish dress. Celtic music is often performed in groups, with instruments like the fiddle, accordion, and bodhran. Many modern musicians continue to draw inspiration from traditional Celtic music, infusing it with their own unique styles and interpretations. There are six modern Celtic languages still spoken today, Irish Gaelic, Scottish Gaelic, Welsh, Breton, Cornish, and Manx. These languages have their roots in the ancient Celtic languages spoken by the Celts over 2,000 years ago. Each language has its own unique characteristics and dialects, but they all share a common heritage and cultural identity. Celtic literature has a long and rich history, dating back to ancient times. The earliest known examples of Celtic literature are the tales of the Ulster Cycle and the Fenian Cycle from Ireland, which were passed down through oral tradition for centuries before being written down. These tales are filled with heroes, gods, and magical creatures, and they give us a glimpse into the beliefs and values of the ancient Celts. In addition to these epic tales, Celtic literature also includes poetry, prose, and religious texts. One of the most famous examples is the Welsh epic poem, Why Mabinogi, which tells the story of a group of heroes and their adventures in the magical land of Anne. A significant interaction between the Celts and the Roman Empire had occurred. When the Roman Empire expanded into Gaul and Britain, they encountered the Celtic tribes who inhabited these lands. At first, the Romans and the Celts had a peaceful relationship, with the Celts even adopting some aspects of Roman culture such as their language, technology, and religion. However, tensions soon arose, and the Romans began to see the Celts as a threat to their empire. They launched several military campaigns against the Celtic tribes, which led to the eventual conquest of Gaul and Britain. The Roman influence on the Celts was significant, as they introduced new technologies such as roads, aqueducts, and sanitation systems. 
the Romans also introduced Christianity to the Celts, which eventually became the dominant religion in many areas. However, the Celtic culture remained strong, and many aspects of their art, music, and literature survived the Roman occupation. The impact of the Romans on the Celts was both positive and negative. While the Romans introduced new technologies and religion, they also imposed their culture and way of life on the Celts, which led to the loss of some of their traditions and beliefs. There were several people throughout Celtic history who made significant contributions to their communities and left a lasting impact on the world. Let's take a closer look at some of the most famous among them. First up, we have Boudicca, also known as Boadicea, who was a queen of the Iceni tribe in Britain during the Roman occupation. In 60 AD, Boudicca led a rebellion against the Romans after they violated her tribe's rights and mistreated her family. Her army was made up of many different Celtic tribes, and together they sacked several Roman cities before finally being defeated. Boudicca's bravery and leadership have made her a symbol of resistance and national pride in Britain, and her story continues to inspire people today. Another notable Celtic figure is St. Patrick, who is widely known as the patron saint of Ireland. Although he wasn't actually Irish himself, St. Patrick was kidnapped by pirates and taken to Ireland as a slave when he was young. After escaping and returning to his home in Britain, he had a vision that called him to return to Ireland and convert the pagan Celts to Christianity. St. Patrick is credited with bringing Christianity to Ireland and helping to spread literacy and education throughout the country. Moving on, we have Brehan Law, which was the ancient legal system of the Celtic people. Brehan Law was based on a complex set of customs and traditions, and it emphasized the importance of fairness, equality, and mutual respect. This legal system was so effective that it survived for centuries even after the arrival of Christianity and the influence of Roman law. Brehan law was eventually replaced by the English common law, but its legacy can still be seen in modern Irish law and culture. Finally, we have William Wallace, who is perhaps best known for his role in the Scottish Wars of Independence in the late 13th century. Wallace led a series of successful military campaigns against the English, including a decisive victory at the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297. Although he was eventually captured and executed by the English, Wallace's bravery and determination have made him a national hero in Scotland and a symbol of resistance against tyranny and oppression. There are several reasons why Celtic culture has remained popular throughout the centuries. One of the most significant is their connection to nature. The Celts believed that the natural world was alive with spirits and energies, and they respected and revered the land, sea, and sky. Their art and mythology reflect this reverence, with many depictions of animals, plants, and natural landscapes. This connection to nature continues to inspire people today, as we strive to live more sustainably and harmoniously with the environment. Another reason for the enduring appeal of Celtic culture is their art and mythology. The Celts produced stunning artwork in a variety of mediums, from intricate metalwork to beautiful illuminated manuscripts. Their mythology is rich with gods, goddesses, heroes, and monsters, and their stories continue to capture our imaginations. The tales of King Arthur, for example, are heavily influenced by Celtic mythology and have been retold in countless forms throughout the centuries. The intricate knotwork and designs found in Celtic art also continue to influence modern design and fashion. Finally, the Celts have a reputation as fierce warriors, and this has added to their enduring appeal. Their military prowess was legendary, and their warriors were feared and respected throughout the ancient world. This reputation for strength and courage continues to inspire people today and is often celebrated in popular culture through films, books, and other media. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the history and culture of the Celts. 
From their early beginnings in Central Europe to their far-reaching impact on the ancient world, the Celts were a fascinating and complex people. Their art, mythology, and traditions continue to inspire and captivate us today. Whether you're drawn to their connection to nature, their reputation as fierce warriors, or their intricate knotwork and designs, there's no denying the enduring appeal of Celtic culture. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel for more fascinating insights into the people and events that shaped our world. And don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts on the Celts and their legacy. Thanks for watching.